and welcome back to AJC STEM. Today we're going to be watching a video on Nobelium. Nobelium? I'm probably saying it wrong. It's fine. Let's just watch the video. That the reason that this compound, that this element, Nobelium, was um, named after Nobel is because Nobel is perhaps the single most famous name that is associated with science. Most of the um, people that, that you talk to just in the street or whatever have probably heard of Nobel, but they may not easily have heard of Seaborg or some of these other people. So I think as a name for an element, it is really quite a good one. So Alfred Nobel was a um, Swedish um, chemist or industrial chemist who worked on explosives. And the problem with explosives, which are compounds of carbon and nitrogen is that until the time of Alfred Nobel they were very unstable. They could go off unexpectedly and kill people. In fact I believe one of Nobel's relatives, might even have been his brother, was killed by a serious explosion. I'm glad that explosives are now more stable and will not just randomly decide to explode. And the reason is that they, th these compounds, when they start reacting, and they're reacting violently, the reaction builds up. The heat produced by the first bit going off goes on, so on. And what Nobel discovered, his real scientific discovery, was that if he spread this compound onto an inert material, um, which is known as kieselgur, it's just essentially rather like sand, that it would be completely stable. You can even throw it in a fire and it won't explode. But if you use a detonator that produces a sharp, small explosion, that is enough to set the whole lot off. And so this allowed people to handle explosives safely. And many of the developments in the 19th century, the expansion of the railways, and some of the unpleasant developments in warfare were all brought about by Nobel's discovery of these high explosives that could be stabilized. That is very interesting. Very cool. Now, the result of this was that Nobel's company became really um, <coughs> very um, lucrative selling these explosives. And when Nobel died, a foundation was set up, which exists to this day, to award prizes in um, <clears throat> the areas of science for outstanding science in physics, in medicine, and <clears throat> chemistry, and um, economics and peace. And I think the economics may actually be given by a sister organization. And each year, the prize is announced for really one of the most exciting pieces of chemistry that has been done in the preceding few years. Occasionally, it's for something that was done just a year or two before, where everybody recognizes straight away it was revolutionary. For example, um, the discovery of C60, the molecule with 60 carbon atoms that looks like a football, was rewarded really quite quickly. Other prizes, you really have to wait to see how the field develops and to see whether this discovery really was important, re whether it really changes the field of chemistry. Is it every chemist's dream to win a Nobel Prize? I suppose so, but there's, there's just only three people can win it each year, and there's so many chemists that it's really something which is almost like a lottery. In fact, some national lotteries, it's probably easier to win a prize. So I think most chemists really aspire to becoming members of the National Academy of Sciences of their own country. And most of them don't think of winning the Nobel Prize. Uh, so Nobelium. Uh, Nobelium is perhaps best known uh, for the fact that it is quite controversial in terms of its naming. Uh, so it was originally discovered and called Nobelium. And then another research group uh, disputed these findings, but then claimed that they'd made it and they gave it a different name. But then eventually, because it had been named as Nobelium for such a long time, people eventually just settled on that. But he had nothing to do with Nobelium. But no, no, no. Nobelium was discovered 
<coughs> or the, the first detected, um, I'm not sure how many years, but probably nearly, um, probably nearly a century after his death. Mm, wow. Well, that was very interesting. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Stay smart.